Hello and welcome to After the Whistle. I am your host, Brian Dorrington, here with Monsieur Mukala Kabongo. Is that your French? <laughs> I think it's Monsieur. I think that's Mr., right? Monsieur. M Monsieur? Monsieur? I think it's Monsieur. No, it's Monsieur. I like Monsieur better. But it's Monsieur. Okay. It's spelled Monsieur, but it's Monsieur. It's Monsieur. Wait, how do you know this? Come on now, my country is a French-speaking country. There you go. Yeah. Well, do you speak fluent French? Parlez-vous français. Is, doesn't that, isn't that, do you speak French? Do you? I don't. No, I just completely oui. botched Monsignor. We oui, parlez français. All right. Well, <laughs> we say the French lessons, but that is interesting. That's something I didn't know about him. Uh, so just uh, to let people know beforehand is I, I have very unprepared for this show, <laughs> as usual, but I have an excuse because I've been playing Red Dead Redemption, like I'm sure a lot of you have, like 24-7. Oh, yeah, and I skipped... Uh, Every football game besides the Patriots, and I did watch the World Series, but other than that, it's been Couch and Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I'm sorry it's going to consume my life for the next four to you five gamers. months. You gamers. I'm not gamers. even a gamer, you but this game is just amazing. <laughs> like, gamers. ask anybody. I'm sure there's people out there who can relate. Probably. I, I don't Follow know. Follow Mukala's Instagram and tell him if you can uh, relate. Why don't you tell, plug well, your Instagram? My, my Instagram is M-U-K-A-L-A -A underscore K. It's the same. Every platform. Twitter. Snapchat, it's all the same. Yeah, so follow, follow me. So follow him and, and let the, let him know that I'm not the only one who's unprepared sports wise because of Red Dead Redemption. Now, let's get into something. Some pe players who were prepared, and they came in and they won the World Series. We are and, the champions. Right. And I actually watched the two the, the last two games. I watched the last game, the, the entire game. Yeah, I watched the yeah, though the I did the entire game of uh the first and, and, and second last games. Yeah. What would you think? Okay, so game number 4, I I couldn't watch it. I don't know what I was doing. I was doing something. I looked up at the score. Was that the really long one? No, that was game 3. Oh, game, yeah, game three, 3 was the 18 innings. That one. Yeah, I, I didn't watch asleep. that. I didn't watch that. I fell asleep. I woke up at around 4 in the morning to check the score. And I saw the game was still going on. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going back to sleep. Yeah, no, yeah, no enough of this. So game game four, the Red Sox were down 4 nothing at one yes, point. Yes, I did. Okay, that's the one it I was, watched. I think it was probably like the sixth inning, I believe. They mm -hmm. were still down 4 nothing. I fell asleep. I wake up, and they won the game 9-6. to six. I, I don't know what happened in that game, but I just woke up, and I saw that they came back and won. I heard there were some big plays. There were some big plays. Uh, Steve Pierce stepped up big, the, the MVP. Um, here we go. Here's, here's some of those highlights. Some bombs. But, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess this, you know, and I don't profess to be this big um, you know, baseball fan who with tons of knowledge, but yeah, watching it, one thing that I heard is how resilient these guys are, and it seems no lead is safe against these guys yeah. because what that's what happened. They kept when they were down, mm -hmm. um, and especially with two outs, is, is when they really came alive with yeah. their bats. So, and, and if he, you looked at the entire season, they were pretty much. The, they were the best hitting team in the one of the one of the best hitting teams in the league. And you wouldn't know that if you listen to Boston Sports Talk Radio, <laughs> because I don't know if you've ever listened to Felger and Mads, but they are the two biggest morons in the sports world, and they just completely bash have completely bashed this team all season. Now yeah. they're finally doing some mea culpas, especially with David Price. I've always liked David Price. I kind of like, you, you know, people in the media don't like him, but I kind of like his, you know. Bleep the media attitude. Yeah. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be, you know, who I am. And he really proved everybody wrong about his, you know, the knock on him was he can't play in the postseason. Yeah. And he pitched uh, some amazing games, and it was great to see. Yeah, he, he this postseason kind of erased all the other postseasons. Oh, what, it has what, to. What, what he did this postseason, every... All of the other postseason fails in the past, it just got erased. Especially game number five, he went eight strong innings. Kind of started off badly. The first pitch was a home run. Yeah. He gave up. Then he settled down, and it was flawless. He was getting them out, getting those three quick one, two, three innings. Just he never gave, he never gave the Dodgers a chance. That's what I liked about game game number five. He never gave them a chance. He kept switching it up, and the the, the Dodgers put, uh, the Dodgers hitters they couldn't figure him out. And that he went strong for eight eight strong innings. That's that's what you could ask for for a big money player like him just just to go eight strong innings. And also some players that were that weren't playing that well. Mookie Betts, big home run in that in that game number five. J D Martinez, big home run. Those two those two batters they pretty much were the best bat hitters 
on the roster this season, and they came up oh, big. Yeah. And Pierce as well, two home runs in the game. He's the, he was the MVP. So this Red Sox team, they they were the best team all season, and also they were the best team in the postseason. They lost three. They only lost three games. And they pretty much humbled each team that they played. Houston, mm -hmm. the Astros series, Houston came in. They had this great roster. People thought they were going to repeat. They got one game, and then they could. the Red Sox just took control after that one loss. So we got to talk about this team as probably one of the greatest teams ever. A lot of people have, especially definitely the greatest Red Sox team. Yeah. And like I said, I don't profess to know everything, but... You know, it sort of seems like it, the best record that they've had. Mm -hmm. One of the th problems with winning championships, though, is being able to bring those guys good. back. Yeah. And there are a lot of guys um, who are due for some big paychecks. I yeah. think Pierce is a free agent. Ovaldi's a free agent. Um, Kimbrell is a free yeah. agent. And there's a, there's another big name guy I believe who who's a who's a free agent. Chris Sales, so. they picked up his option. They picked up Chris Sales' option. David Price is coming. He back. He picked up his own option. Yeah, he's so. coming back. So <clears throat> they they as long as they retain the hitters and pick up some free some pitches in free agency, I think they'll have another chance. Yeah, and I and I feel like I did miss a lot because I was totally invested in those World Series games. You know, it was almost <laughs> like you know what I kind of wish I could probably get behind this. Not like seven hour games. But, you know, a few, mm -hmm. you know, games here and there. So maybe next year I'll give it a, a little bit of a chance. But it was definitely fun to be a part of, even if yeah. you're uh, a casual fan. Yeah, because definitely. Because baseball is still not as big as the other sports, no, especially for our well, generation. Depends who you talk to. Well, if you look at the, if you looked at the numbers for the Patriots Monday Night Football game against the Bills, mm -hmm. it had better ratings than every single World Series game except one, and that's Patriots versus the Bills, yeah. and that's on ESPN too, which is a uh, or ESPN, which is a uh, paid station. So yeah. it just goes to show that even probably the most boring football game of the year on Monday Night Football is still going to get more views than the World right. Series. Baseball loyalists think baseball is still America's pastime. That's right. They're, 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 they're just, you know. They're older. <laughs> they're, they're old and they're, older they're stuck, and they're in, their stuck ways, in their but ways. But this was, this was entertaining yeah. and uh, great job to the Red Sox. Yeah, the parade. Today. We should talk about the parade a little bit because there were some wild people who Geniuses. were throwing full beers yeah. at, the, um, at the duck tour thing. Now, I don't think these people were malicious because nope. if you remember Gronk, sometimes he would catch the beers yeah. you know, during the parade. But they're just stupid. Yeah, yeah that's pretty dumb. One, one actually hit Alex Cora. Yep. And damaged the trophy. Yep. Like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you stop throwing beers? Stop throwing beers. It's it's different with Gronk because Gronk is kind of like the Incredible Hawk. So yeah, he'll, he he wants that. He wants yeah, right. that. I don't think these these players or anybody on that bull were expecting bears to be thrown at them, and somebody's wife got injured. Somebody's uh, yeah, one of the players' wives got injured, got hit in the stomach. <laughs> It's totally unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, like, I could, first of all, I don't know how they're getting beers through there. I, I, I wasn't there, of course, but you imagine security super tight. You know, if be, the people in front, you take care of that. Maybe toss yeah. them up. Ask them if they want it first. But these were coming from, like, 25 yards back, just yeah. like darts. Like, what are these people thinking? I don't know. They must have been some Dodgers and Astros fans or something like that. No, that I think they were just no. inebriated um, Red Sox fans, like, who just don't know any better. But anyway, yeah, that's yeah. got to stop. Stop throwing beers at, like, the players because you're going to injure Mookie Betts' golden glove arm. So yeah. let's stay away from that. Yeah, geniuses. Peeps. Stop it. We're okay. ta Boston's taking all the trophies. We got one trophy down. Another one's coming up in February. Okay, well, let's, let's talk NFL. Okay, let's talk trades. about that. First, we got trades first. Trades. So let's start with. I think this was probably the biggest trade. I don't know if you agree with me, and that's Golden Tate to the Eagles for a that third was a, round pick. That was. That was a, I think that was a, that was a good pickup for the Eagles. They need they need some weapons. They have some injuries. Golden Tate is a he can play in the slot and he can play outside. Just another speedy weapon for Carson Wentz. And mm -hmm. I don't know the Lions uh, get a third round pick for him. I, I think it's an even trade. It's one yeah. of those ones where you can really look and because Tate had one year. This was Tate was going to be is going to be a free agent after this season, um, and it looked like Patricia wasn't going to resign him. He's 30 years old, so Patricia gets a third round pick 
out of it. And the Philadelphia Eagles are in a division that's wide open, and they need the help as receivers. So this is one of those trades that you look at and you can say, okay, this makes sense for both teams. Yeah, and they need, yeah, they have a chance to make, they need a, they need to make a run, actually. It's week, what are we, week nine? Yeah. We're week nine, they're four and four. So they need to start making a run because they're, they've been inconsistent. So maybe this will give them a little spark on offense that they need. It, I th- it was a good. It, it's a good. It's a solid pickup for them. I think. I think Tate is, will help that team expend a lot. All a right. Lot. And now there, there were rumors that Golden Tate was going to go to the Patriots. Would you have given up a third rounder for Golden Tate? Yeah. You would have. Yeah. I, mean, it's a I think third a third round. round is a little too steep for Tate, yeah, in, in my mean, opinion. I mean, it's just the third round, and I'm sure somewhere they'll get a they'll get a third round back because somebody will try to offer them something because the Patriots always do some interesting stuff with picks. But I would have. I would have done it. A guy that I would have loved to see that the, the Patriots go after, um, and there were some rumors that they were, was Desha- Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, that's and true. because it's hard to learn the Patriots offense, Tate mm-hmm. would have had a, a tough time. A guy we'll talk about next to Marys Thomas would have had a tough time. But Deshaun Jackson is one of those guys we can just say, Run down the field. Pretty much. Run down the field yeah. and just the defense, uh, they're going to have to play off him a little bit. Yeah. It opens up room for Gronk. It opens up room for, for everybody else mm-hmm. Yeah. just because of that deep threat. But Patriots decide to not make any moves. Yeah, the Packers got rid of some players. They got rid of HaHa Clinton Dix. I don't understand why they're getting rid of That was a surprise. That Ty Montgomery, of course, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that he, later. He, they got rid of him, but that HaHa Clinton Dix one was kind of yeah, interesting. Yeah, especially for a f- fourth rounder. Yeah, they, and they already have issues on defense, and you're trading away one of your best defensive backs. I, I, don't, I don't understand what that franchise is doing, to be honest with you. I have no idea what they're doing. They're going in the wrong direction. A trade that, I think this was a big trade, Demarius Thomas. Yeah. That was a big move. They it, needed a receiver. Yep. This yeah. is this is another trade that you look at and you could say, okay, I think this benefits both teams as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. The Texans, Will Fuller was done is done for the season with with the torn ACL, so they needed someone opposite of DeAndre Hopkins. And this guy, he's a he's a big receiver. Oh yeah. Big body. Pro bowler. Pro bowler, a Super Bowl champion. He could get <laughs> he could get in the end zone. When you're in the red zone, you could t- throw it up to him. Now you have two guys on the outside. You can just throw it up in the red zone that could mm-hmm. go and get it. So I think – and Deshaun Watson has been – actually, the past couple of weeks, he's been he's been playing a lot better. He looks much he lo- better. He looks, he mm-hmm. looks like he's more comfortable now because the first week – the first couple of weeks of the season, he didn't look too comfortable uh, doing anything. Which is understandable yeah. coming back from him. Yeah, now like I think that. he's finally getting back into rhythm. And the Texans, they, they're playing solid football. I still don't trust their coach, but I think this – I think they'll 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 make a run in the playoffs, especially in that division. They, it looks like yep. they're the the top team in the that division. Of the so I think that was a good move. Now, would you have would you have given up a third rounder for Thomas? Because that was another name that was linked to yeah, the I Patriots. Would, yeah, I would have. Now let's just yeah. hypothetical because I like hypotheticals. Who would you rather have, um, Tate or Thomas? Probably Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. I'd, I'd like Tate. Yeah, I, just because he's a little bit better after the catch, and that's yeah, kind of like helps the Patriots. I do too, you know. But we got Josh Gordon for that. Anyway, let's move on to the Patriots versus Bills, which was one of the most boring, uh, at least first halves that I've watched all season. Yeah, that was terrible. Um, very boring. Four field goals yeah. all game. Um, what's your take on that? Game? This was one of those. <laughs> I think this was one of those trap games. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Buffalo is just horrible, and it's easy to just <clears throat> yawn and not take them seriously because mm-hmm. they're horrible on offense. Their defense is serviceable, serviceable, but they're still not good. And whatever quarterback they throw back there is just not good. They, th- this is a poorly run franchise, all the stuff they've done. So the Patriots were sleeping. I, I thought mm-hmm. they were half asleep this entire game. Mm-hmm. For the majority of the game, they didn't, they didn't score their first touchdown until, what, the fourth quarter? Um, I don't know uh, when uh, James White scored it, it, it but it was late. In yeah, the it game. was late. So they re- they really just didn't take the Bills seriously. But mm-hmm. I mean, good job for them winning because if they lost that game, we would have just it would have been hell week for them <laughs> to lose into a terrible team Absolutely. like that. But defense made plays. Granted, they're playing a team that's offensively challenged. Mm-hmm. So. This was more worrisome about the offense. The offense weren't generating points. They were they were getting in the red zone and not putting the ball in the red zone. Yeah, in, I, in the end zone. I, I agree with you. Um, they, were, they gave up a lot of yardage to the, the defense, but the Patriots w- went with that bend, don't break mentality. Mm-hmm. They held a team to six points, and whenever you can, you know, not get a touchdown 
have a touchdown scored against you on any team on the NFL. Yeah. It's it's pretty big, especially where there's been a lot of defensive struggles and, and Hightower wasn't in that game. So the secondary played well. McCourty had a nice pick six. That's yeah. good to see. But four field goals, only one touchdown yeah, from, okay. from the offense, James yeah. White. Brady went um, 29 for 45. He had 324 yards, but that's a lot of incompletions, and he had no touchdowns. That's a lot of passes. I think <laughs> missing Sony Michelle, we kind of saw it right there. They yeah. didn't rush the ball that much this game either. No. So, Sony Michelle, come back, please. <laughs> My biggest concern is Rob Gronkowski. He has yeah. not been the dominant Rob Gronkowski. No. I don't think he's scored since week one. No, he has not. He has not scored since week one. I think he's been... Averaging like 53 yards since week one, since after that big game in week one here. So he's been. Uh, I don't think. Uh, how the teams are. Those double teams are working, or he's just. I don't think they're. they're I mean, I'm not watching super closely every play to, to exactly Robert Gronkowski because I'm watching everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the double plays, uh, the double teams are as prevalent as a lot of people in the Boston media are making it out to be. No, they, he there's he's gotten a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. It's just mm -hmm. not. I don't know. This is just that it's not happening this year for whatever reason. I don't know if it's injuries or what, but. You know, he's just not the same Rob Gronkowski that we know that you put anybody on him and he'll dominate. He's just not dominating this season. But yeah, that's why they're winning, so. That's why I am a little bit frustrated that the Patriots didn't add um, a speedy receiver or even a second tight end because we know that the Patriots can do a lot with two tight end sets. Yeah. Um, not anybody, you know, an all-star on Rob Gronkowski's level, but just mm -hmm. somebody to, to draw some of that coverage um, in the middle. Yeah. So. A little bit worried about the offense after this week. I do think that they'll get back on track, especially once Sony Michelle comes back. Yeah. He will come back. Definitely. Just not sure when. Yeah, and then this week they're playing a team that's also defensively challenged, the Packers. Who'll be even worse without Clinton Haha Definitely. They had they, ha -ha. they actually had a close game against the Rams. They, this was a this was actually a good game. Mm -hmm. And Ty Montgomery, I don't know what Ooh. he I don't know what he was Ooh. thinking. I have no idea what he was thinking. Do you you have two. Well, there was about two minutes left. Mm -hmm. You're getting the ball back. You're down. All you need is a field goal. You can win the game or t tie the game and win the game. No, know. they would have won the they game. They would have won the game, right? You could have won the game, and you took the ball out. You took the ball out the end zone. Anybody knows that if it's that close of a game and they kick it and you catch it in the end zone, you just take the knee, especially with the quarterback that you have. Just take the knee. You get the ball at the 25-yard line, 30-yard mm -hmm. line, or whatever. They keep changing it. I don't know where the ball starts. But you get you get there, and you you have more than enough time to score. And you can, and the Packers were moving the ball on the Rams' defense. They were get they were moving the ball solid. They were Aaron Rodgers was finding open receivers, and that 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 literally cost him the game. It cost him the game. Then he then there was some other then stuff happened where some players on the team that they voiced their displeasure. Of what he did, and then he tried to justify what he did, and then they got, they ran him out of town. And well, yeah, we there, I, a lot of there are some reports that he was frustrated with the lack of playing time he was getting, um, and he was complaining and had a, a, a virtual meltdown on the sidelines, and a lot of guys thought that that was, you know, they didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And then after, because he was frustrated, he decided to run the ball out of the end zone. And you're right, it did cost the team a game because. You know, there was, I think it would have been uh, like a minute and 57 seconds. Yep. You have one timeout from the 20-yard line, and you have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. You just need to get in the field goal range. So it, it was clearly a selfish decision yeah. by Ty Montgomery. And, yeah, they shipped him off. What, they sent him to Baltimore, right, yeah, for, for like a seventh one, round seventh pick. Round yeah, pick. They, just got, so, they just got rid of him. They, yeah, they, they, they just got rid of him. Because if they if they weren't going to trade, they were going to release him. If the yeah. trade deadline wasn't this week, they were going to release him because what, what ha the aftermath of that was just, you know, it, it wasn't good. The team looked like the team was just divided. Of course. And, and, and I don't blame them because I would have been too. You saw Aaron Rodgers' reaction after when, the, when, he, had, when he fumbled the ball. He, I think he, he was said, he yelled out, what was that? And oh, is that what he said? I think I that's what that. he said. I think that, that's what he said. So, I mean, hey. When your quarterback's not happy, your franchise quarterback's not happy, you're going to get uh, run out of town. Oh, that's yeah, just, you're gone. They, that's just how it is. So, you know, they, they got this map. What do you see with the matchup with the Patriots and the Packers this, this weekend? 
Well, like you said, I see a defensively challenged team, and hopefully that the Patriots will be able to exploit them. I mean, I actually, you know, I do think that their defense, I actually do think the Bills have a better defense than the Packers. They do. The Packers' defense doesn't scare me, but Aaron Rodgers always plays well against the Patriots, and he's mm -hmm. still Aaron Rodgers, and they don't have a great record this year. Mm -hmm. But as we saw, they came down to the last two minutes against the best team in yeah. the NFL in the in the St. Louis Rams. Yeah, they, so. could play, they could play with the best of them. They could play with the best of them. The problem, thing is they got to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. They do have weapons uh, on the outside. That Devontae you to, Adams. Devontae Adams, uh, Randall Cobb, mm -hmm. uh, the tight end. Uh, yeah. Graham, I don't even yeah. know if he's even. Jimmy Graham. I don't, I, he's done nothing. You no, know, he's still threatening the Kyle, red zone. They're running back, Aaron Jones. He, they, they, they've got a good, solid offensive team. So I'm going to see what, how, what the Patriots do because they do got to keep Aaron Rodgers in the pocket and not let him run around there because that just will let the receivers find, other, find more ways to get open. And so I think, I think this is going to be a, so, a good matchup. And, I, you know, we'll see what the happens. The Patriots do have problems with mobile quarterbacks yes, and it's always been that way I, I think that they should probably spy him they think that maybe you know I think Van Noy's fast enough to be able to uh, to cover Aaron Rodgers I wouldn't want him on Cam Newton or Deshaun Watson or anything but you know don't let him get outside the pocket don't let him run for those first downs yeah and definitely keep that bend but don't break mentality Aaron Rodgers is going to complete passes let him complete those passes but don't give up those points Field goals are fine. Let Mason yeah. Crosby kick five of them <laughs> because I think the Patriots are going to be able to put up touchdowns uh, in this game. I don't know the health of Sony Michel. Is uh, he? Uh, he's not. He's not playing. This he's not he's playing. He's going to be out for a couple more weeks. And what about Cannon? Do we know about not him sure. yet? Okay, because sure, yeah. he's a big part of this yeah. too. But I do like the Patriots in this game. I do think that they're going to win. Yeah, same here. I, I think it'll probably be a pretty high-scoring game. I'm going to guess it'll be close. I'm going to guess 33-30. Depends on the weather too, so. That's true. Yeah. You want, let's play a game of quarterback shuffle, which seems like the Buccaneers have been doing that all season. Out, out goes Jameis, in comes Fitzmagic. Back again after Jameis Winston threw four picks against the Bengals. A couple of those picks, I was wondering, well, who in the world are you throwing the ball to? Mm -hmm. He literally threw the ball to the defender. And Jameis Winston is a bust. Of course. He's you, you a bust. You can say that now. Now it's He's fair to say. He's a bust. I've, I've been trying to hold off on calling him a bust. I've tried. You know, I try to give it some time, but he's a bust. He, mm -hmm. he still has problems getting the ball down the field. You have two. You have a speedy receiver and you have a big, big receiver. receiver. And you have issues two, getting the two ball. Two good tight ends, too. Yeah, and you have issues getting the ball to them down the field. Fitzpatrick comes in and he gets the ball to them down the field with, without any issues. But for some reason, Jameis has issues doing that. He still does makes costly turnovers. Decision making is still poor. So I think he he's a bust. I don't think he's got. A lot of people don't think he's going to be with the Bucks next season. I don't think he's going to be with the Bucks next no. season because it's just not working out. It's not working out. He hasn't been the guy that we they thought he would be. And you know here they are. And also you got to look at the coach. The coach too. Coach and the Dirk quarterback. Cutter, yeah, he should Cutter, be gone soon. Dirk Cutter and Winston are not going to be on that team this year. And for some reason, the Bucks, they were so eager to hire Dirk Cutter, too. I don't know why, but they were so eager to hire him that they fired Lovey Smith mm -hmm. just so they could hire him. And they're nothing, they're, they haven't improved on anything since Dirk Cutter took over as coach. So the Bucks are the Bucks. And yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, I don't know, you're right about the lack of the downfield ability, and I don't think it's weakness on James Winston's arm no, strength. No, Because he has a strong arm. I just don't know if, if he's afraid to make a mistake, if he's not getting the right reads. I don't know what it is, but you're right. He does struggle in that, and then Fitzpatrick comes, uh, we'll call him Fitzmagic because he <laughs> still has a little bit about that. He comes in, and he's a true gunslinger. Yes. But at the same time, he's also that guy who oh, will yeah. put it three, four great yeah. games and yeah. then lay an egg oh, yeah. you know, at, yeah, at yeah. a huge important, important spot. So they, I, if I would have had some, uh, a fire sale if I, would, if I was him. Like I would have, yeah, I would have shipped out. We didn't even talk about out, them trading. Yeah, we didn't even <laughs> talk about them, but I would have shipped out. Deshaun Jackson. Um, I might have even traded Jameis Winston at the deadline. Why not? You got Fitzpatrick for the west, rest of the year. Build the team around um, O.J. Howard and, and Mike Evans, you yeah. know, because those are young, talented guys. But 
Definitely trouble in, um, in Tampa, in Tampa definitely, Bay. Definitely, definitely Tampa. And I think we skipped uh, some trouble in Cleveland, like there always is. Oh, uh, yeah, we did. We did. We'll get to that now. We can get to that now. Why don't you go ahead? Hugh Jackson, Todd Haley, they got the boot. I think we saw this coming. Of I think we saw this coming. It was just not should working. Should have happened one. in the offseason. It should have happened. Yeah, it should have happened after last season. And you, you go, what, they go 0-16? Yeah. You can't bring a coach back after you go 0-16. And now he's gone. The offensive coordinator's gone. Now now it's time for the, the head coaching search. A lot of people are thinking Lincoln Riley. Baker Mayfield's old coach from Oklahoma is one of the top candidates. I don't, I don't, I'm not big on college coaches coming into the NFL because I don't think they're. There hasn't been they, that much success, yeah, especially not, recently. Not Look that. at uh, Chip Kelly, I think, is probably the most yeah, yeah. recent option, and we yeah. all know how that went. Yeah, and this is just the Browns. This is just a terrible organization that's just, you know, but trying to get the top five pick again this this off the, the yeah draft. I mean there's some people who I've heard that are making the argument like oh this is a great place for a coach to want to be because look they got Baker Mayfield in place and they got all these young guys and all these young picks and I'm looking around and I'm like it's the same ownership it the, it starts from the top mm -hmm. uh, of the franchise and they're just have a culture of losing I don't think that coaches are really going to be jumping no. and trying to get the, this job. I really don't think so. So I think they're going to have to look at college. Um, I, I don't really know who they turn to. I think having Todd Haley as your offensive coordinator is hostile no matter where he's been. I mean, yeah. he gets drunk and fights with fans <laughs> after games. I mean, he had a terrible relationship with Ben Roethlisberger. I think Todd Haley is a, a terrible terrible cancer on any franchise he goes to. And Hugh Jackson's a good guy. I like Hugh he's Jackson. He's not built to be a he's head just coach. Not, he's not. Maybe, maybe a college head coach, you know, because he's really player-friendly but uh, <laughs> or high school. But, yeah, this should have happened at the beginning of the season. I think everybody – it's kind of weird that it came now. I don't it's know the why Browns. they had so much hope. It's the Browns. But then you're right. It's the Browns. And it starts with the ownership in the, in the up-front office. So who knows where they go from here. I don't see – this as a, a great blooming franchise, I think, as a lot of people do. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Craig, host yeah. of the Flex. <laughs> and Craig, host of the Flex. Uh, so yeah. that's my take on that. Another dumpster fire team. The dumpster fire, I like that. The alleged Super Bowl favorite Jaguars, who people had who high hopes. Who said they were hopes. the Super Bowl favorite? A lot of people had high expectations for them. I did it. I told people you couldn't trust this team, especially with the moves they made in the offseason, just getting rid of players. Mm -hmm. Now they got rid of Dante Flower, one of their one of their one of their first round picks, a top three pick. They got rid of him. They sent him to the Rams. Another solid defensive pickup for the Rams. Mm -hmm. the quarterback is terrible. Offense is terrible. This is just not a good football team. They're going, they've been after that Patriots game, everything's been downhill for them. I think that's been the high point of their season was beating the Patriots. But after that, Nothing's been going well for them. They're just not a good team. Offensively, mm -hmm. they stink. Defensively, <laughs> they're not as good as as they thought they were. They're not. They're not that good on defense. We. They're not. People are moving. The, teams are moving the ball easily on them. And this team is just. It, it's just bad. And this is just another perfect example of not getting a backup quarterback, a solid backup quarterback, because we knew what Blake Bortles was. Mm -hmm. We knew. Everybody knew except the head coach and the GM. So. Here they are. So, uh, I do agree with you that the defense isn't playing well, but they have talent. You got Miles yeah, Jack, Jalen Ramsey, AJ Boye, uh, the list. Um, what? Who is it? Calais Campbell. They got a lot of good players, but for some reason they're just not gelling. And maybe it's one of those mental things, and maybe there's some internal struggles there. I don't know. But either way, it's I I I, I can't pinpoint what's going on with the defense. I think mm. we know the offensive issues. Yeah. Start with Blake Bortles. Leonard Fournette's been injured. They don't have a number one receiver. Nope. I don't know where this team goes from here. Period. They don't have a receiver, period. And they just re-signed Blake Bortles to a, a contract that nobody else is going to pick up, so you can't trade the guy. I don't know what you do. I'm surprised that they weren't sellers at the uh, the trade Sellers. deadline. I'm surprised I'm that they didn't get, um, you know, you could have probably got rid of, I don't know, somebody on that team. I'm surprised that they, they didn't do that, but. I don't know. I guess the division's open. They're still, what, 4-4 four and four or something? Yeah, they, I don't know. Maybe, they're, they're, maybe they think that they can win the division. Maybe. It's still wide open, but I, I don't see it happening. They can't score points. So they're, they're an inept team right now. And, yeah, they're, they're probably going to – they're not making the playoffs, I'll call it now. Another inept organization that has tons of issues, the New York football giants who 
came into the season with all these expectations and they still they forgot who their quarterback was because <laughs> they didn't learn from last season. This team is still having problems offensively. The, and they they've had like they've been cleaning house, slowly cleaning house. They've mm -hmm. made a few trades, but this is just a sorry team. This is a sorry team to watch. You, Eli Manning is hurts my eyes to watch him because Oh, what? I I love it because every time, I hate him. Every time he drops back, he's he, he's getting sacked or he's throwing a pick. He is getting he's, sacked a lot. A lo the, yeah. the offensive line has not helped him out. Let's yeah. be, let's make it clear. It's at not entirely all, they on have him. not helped him out at all, and nothing has been going right. You know what I will say about this game? Adrian Peterson it has been playing really well this entire season. Absolutely, he's been playing solid, and you know we all thought he was gonna decline, but. It looks hey, like I didn't it's a think that. I didn't say that. It looked like you did, you said he wasn't going to be the same player. You didn't think that's he was. true. I did say that, but, but I didn't say that he, he would. He's it's like a resurrection right now for Adrian Peterson. Well, he's a freak athlete, and I think he'll probably go down as one of the top three best running backs of all time. Maybe four: Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, Jim Brown, Adrian Peterson. I don't know who else I'd put on that list. I think those are the top four guys. Um, but yeah, the the Giants. It's Saquon Barkley. That's really, they should just change them, their name to the Barkleys because <laughs> yeah. that's really, and, and he's been great. He's a great pickup, yeah. but I do think that now a lot of people are going to look and say, you passed up on Sam Donald and you let him go to the Jets. All the success Saquon Barkley has, it's great, but you can't build an entire team around a running back, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, you got to get that quarterback Maybe they'll get him in the draft this year, but 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 who knows? They're on. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to. They're wouldn't on that be, clock. They're on that clock. They're that, on that, that clock. Number one pick clock. So, but I I can't say I hate it. I I, I mean I can't hey. say I'm upset. I love seeing the Giants. Lose. I love seeing. I love seeing any time a New York team is just struggling. I yes. love it because New Yorkers are the worst, and the Yankees suck. Oh Remember oh, oh harsh Remember words. That. He's dropping the s bomb. But, yeah, it's great to see that a New York team struggling, but. Jeez, jeez, that's terrible. Well, let's talk about teams that aren't struggling. The Saints, they might be the, they're, the Saints are a problem. They're my fav they're my new favorite in the NFC. Uh, the Rams are good, they're great, but when it comes down to playoff experience and mm -hmm. postseason experience, this is the scariest team to make a run to the Super Bowl in the NFC, it's and it's because Drew Brees and Sean Payton have been there before. Yeah, what, what they got, 12 years together now, so... It's, you know, it's flawless with them. Breeze knows everything about the offense. He has the weapons on the outside. Michael Thomas, he's that Ted guy. Ginn still being able to perform. Yeah, Ted Ginn just outrunning everybody still. Mm -hmm. The two backs, Kamara and Mark Ingram. Mm -hmm. So the, even even Benjamin Watson, he's... Even a good old Ben Watson. He's, yeah, he's okay. still providing, providing enough help for them. So this is a well-built football team. Their defense has been playing a little better. They, their defense is playing better. Their front seven's getting to the quarterback, actually. Mm -hmm. they, Kirk Cousins, your guy, Kirk Cousins. I think I did start him in draft games, yeah, but guy, I still won. That interception so... he threw was terrible. But I still won. That, yeah, that interception he threw was terrible. This was a good victory for them. They beat, a, they beat one of the teams that, it's con that people say may, have, may go to the Super Bowl. So this was a good test for them. They, I, I believe they have a matchup with the Rams coming up soon. I believe. I, I don't know if it's this, this weekend. but Well, you I know, know what I can do is, but, I, can, is I can check. But that, that's going to be, that's gonna be a, a great matchup because this is going to be two, thought, two offensive, two teams that are very explosive on offense. They got weapons everywhere. It's this everywhere. weekend. It's this, it's it's this, this weekend. weekend. This is, is going to be and one it's, of... And it's in uh, New Orleans. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games. New Orleans is a tough place to play, but this is going to be one of those games, I think, Everybody's going to be watching this game. Every, I, except, all right, I'll put Red Dead Redemption down let's, for let's this put, game and the Patriots for down for one day or at least two games. That's about it. Another NFC South team. That's the Carolina Panthers are kind of, people are not, you know, they're kind of flying under the radar on teams. But Cam Newton has been playing. He's been playing lights out the past couple weeks. He's been. And thank you because he's my fantasy uh, quarterback. And I never bet against Cam Newton. He, another game, they. He he did it all. He he led the team in rushing again because mm -hmm. that's just that's just him. Cam Newton's gonna run the ball no matter what. He's just too much of an athlete. He's too much in shape mm -hmm. to not use his feet. But 
He's been doing well throwing the ball, too, in the pocket. He's completing 66% of his passes, which is, which is a career high for him. I think he's a career 59% or 58% completion percentage. So I think this new offense is actually, he's finally, he's figuring it out. It's working. He's getting the, balls to, he's getting the ball to the players, the playmakers that he has. And, you know, this Carolina football team, this is a team that, this is the sleeper team that everybody needs to watch out for. Yeah, I mean, and they're probably going to end up with a wild card yeah. spot just yeah. because the, we just talked about the Saints are most likely going to win the NFC they South. Have two matchups I think. with them at the end of the season. They do. The season. I still like the Saints in both of those matchups. But you're right. They Cam Newton has been playing great. And uh, Christian McCaffrey is a elusive weapon now that they have Greg Olson back. Um, they don't have the greatest receiving core. You know, I think DJ no, Moore's no. getting there. Yeah. Funchess is okay. But they, and they still have a solid defense. They definitely have the best defense in the NFC South. Yeah. So you're right. This is a team that um, does fly under the radar. And they beat the Ravens, yeah. who a lot of people were saying is probably the, the third best team in the AFC. Not so sure about that now. No way. <laughs> no, I, I, don't think, I don't think so anymore. So a lot can change in yeah. a week in the NFL. Yeah, definitely a lot can change. But we'll see what happens now. Stop oh, yeah, for DraftKings. Uh, what? Brian, yeah, what? I keep losing. I haven't won in a couple weeks. <laughs> oh, I won again. I'm good. If you guys are following me and you pay for, and you play for the for the for the dough or the beans, you've probably oh, won a couple man. beans. So uh, keep keep following me. Uh, All right, I'll let you go first since you're the loser. Who do you got? All right, for quarterback, I have Mr. Reliable. This is my guy, Cam Newton, the guy I never bet against. Mm -hmm. They're playing the Bucks. The Bucks have no they the Bucks have no defense. Also, I have Tariq Cohen from the Bears. They're go. playing the Bills, another team. They're probably going to, by the time the end of the game, the fourth quarter comes, they're going to be running the ball a lot. So I, I, James White, James White's been consistent. Brandon Cooks, because they are play, he's playing against his old team that traded him. So mm -hmm. I think he's going to have a big game. Stephon Diggs. Demarius Thomas, I think he's going to come out with a splash. Playing against the Broncos, of mm -hmm. course. So he's, <laughs> I'm predicting 150 yards. O.J. Howard, Sammy Watkins, and the Jets defense just because they're playing the Dolphins. And yeah, we got we're, we're thinking along the same lines. We got a, we got a lot of the same guys. So I am going with Cam Newton as well. And I'm st I usually stack him with a receiver, but since they don't have a good number one, I'm stacking him with Christian McCaffrey and Greg Olson, who's came back from injury and picked up right where he left off. I got Kareem Hunt. Mm -hmm. They're going against the Browns. I think that they're going to get up early on the Browns, and then they're going to run the ball a lot to, to try to run the clock out. Beasley is just such a deal at 4,100. Look at he's averaging uh, 11, almost 12 points per game. So I'm going to keep going with him as yeah. long as he's cheap. I agree with you, Demarius Thomas. Let's take a risk on him. Why not? Uh, and you know, I got the other top receiver in, in the Rams, you, have, you had Cooks, right? Yeah. So I got Woods, and we talked about the Saints' defense is getting better, but they're still uh, will be exposed. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm going to go with Chris Carson because I need to go a little bit cheaper, and he is getting a lot of carries. And then I like the Vikings' defense at home. Detroit, they just got rid of Golden Tate. I assume things that, uh, aren't that great in the locker room right now. So, yeah, that's my lineup, and I'm going to guarantee another win. Uh, Calling it. This might be my week. This might okay. be my now, week. I do like your lineup. It's, it's one of the better ones that I've seen that you have, NBA. which isn't saying much. NBA. we got to mm. talk NBA. You see the jump shot. That's not I really how I, you shoot, is it? That's, well, you know, it's all, it's all go, it goes in. Okay. It well. goes in. I challenged one of the BU guys the other day. A BU basketball player yeah. or like a random student? No, a BU well, well, that's one of their players. That's very silly. Their, no, yeah, silly on his part. No, it's silly he, on your I, part. I told him he'd lose. Oh, God. Well, we, I've never seen you play. Uh, I gonna, get buckets. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to film it, and we're going to play it on here. We're going to play Hopefully, if, later today, I'm at Northeastern. They, they let me have a shootout with one of their, their players. We'll see. That won't happen. That will embarrass this sh show. No, it won't so, embarrass us. All right, scholarship let's move players. on to some guys who can actually shoot and score, and that's Clay Thompson dropping 52 and good old Derrick Rose dropping 50. Clay so, Thompson did it in three quarters. Yeah. Now, the Warriors the past week, Steph Curry hit 51 in three quarters. Kevin Durant scored 41 against the Knicks. And Klay Thompson with 52 and also broke Steph Curry's three-point field goals made in a game with 14. This, these, this isn't even fair. They scored 92 points in the first half. 92 points in the first half. Some teams can't even score 80. 
And these guys are scoring 92 points in the first half. They have three guys who legitimately can score. Two of them, two of them can do it off the dribble, drive it in different ways, and they are all high percentage shooters. And then Clay Thompson, he doesn't, he hardly dribbles the ball. It's just catch and shoot for him, and it's. It, A lot of those shots, though, didn't look like contested. Uh, well, Teams really got to get out on them well, on the arc. Well, you know the Chicago Bulls. Uh, uh, they, I think they were just watching the show. I don't. I think they were just watching. That's I don't true. Think, they were probably in awe. Yeah, I they think were just. So. They were just happy to see it happen in uh, person. Yeah. So the Warriors. Oh, that they, one looked oh, see, see, wide open. Why do you leave Clay Thompson wide open for a three? Uh, that uh, one he got there late. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't. I don't. Yeah. The defense was atrocious. But you know, this is the same guy that scored 37 points in a quarter. He scored. He's also scored 60 points in three quarters in about 29 minutes. So he's capable of this. And he wasn't playing. He was he was actually had a, a shooting slump to start the season. He was not shooting that well for the, for the to start the season. I think he was like four for like 26 mm -hmm. from threes. And then he goes 14 of 24. And they should have just left him in to get 80 points or something because he could have done it. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, they're a scary team. Yeah. Very now, scary. Now let's go to the other Derek guy. Rose. Who, uh, this was a surprise 50 points. Derrick Rose. 30-year-old Derrick Rose, yeah. a bunch of, you know, one-time MVP, a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking about it before we went on. A lot of probably mental yeah. uh, injuries and, and holding back after, after all the knees. So yeah. drops 50 points. You said he's going for sixth man of the year. You yeah, know? he's coming off the bench. I'm just happy to see him playing the way he used to play yeah. because he those, those knee injuries really, really – affected him mentally mm -hmm. and it wasn't every time we watched him it wasn't the same guy that we saw with the MVP during the MVP season the explosion the confidence more than more so was the confidence because yeah. he was he was one confident player and then it was it seemed like he wasn't confident in his game for a certain time but slowly the past couple of years he's been slowly getting back to it and now I think he's actually and he, it's actually there now that he, you know, especially in this new role, because it's a challenge for him. Mm -hmm. it, this is a way for him to challenge himself trying to get that six man of the year. I'm just happy to see him actually playing well. And he's not super old. He just turned 30. Yeah. You know, so he's, he, he could, I don't know if he's, he'll never get back to his former self, mm -hmm. self, but he proved that he can still play. And, you know, with the Jimmy Butler situation, yeah. who knows? He, if he's gone, Derrick yeah. Rose might get a bigger role. And yeah, Jimmy Butler will be gone at some point. He'll be gone at some point. Yeah, he's point. already starting to sit out games. Yeah, he'll be what gone. do you think of that? Yeah, that's... Wow. They should they should have traded him already. They didn't they offer didn't some, it was the four, Heat four. that offered four first no, rounds. The Rockets. The Rockets. Uh, that, that's just foolish. But but that would have been really like kind of like second round picks because uh, they would have easily yeah, made it to the finals. But yeah, they got to get rid of him. They got to get rid of him. I'm not, oh, back to Cleveland we go. Six games into the season and they fired Ty Lue. Uh, this is. That was a little too soon. They yeah, like, way too soon. LeBron leaves town, and everything for Cleveland is just going. It's it's just turning into a dump dumpster fire. I don't know why you're firing Coach Lou after six games. These six losses aren't his fault. Have you seen the team play defense? They don't play no defense at all. They play that Olay defense. Well, they, they didn't just, play defense last year. Yeah. So I mean, why would they think he would? Change? Yeah. So I, this was, you know. The only good thing is he got he's got a, he's got away from Dan Gilbert because Dan Gilbert is an inept owner and you know I'm I'm still I was still surprised LeBron actually went back to Cleveland because of Dan Gilbert but this this was I don't know six games in this is this is terrible that's I don't know what are you doing what are you doing and I thought this team had they had enough players to actually make the playoffs but. And now it's and now it's blown up because J.R. Smith wants to be out of there. He'll, he'll, be, he'll, he'll be out sooner or later. They gave Kevin Love all that money too, and they, it's just one guy leaves, and it's just like nobody knows what they're doing. Well, it's that not one guy; it's I mean, LeBron James. Well, yeah. he's like the he's like three guys, <laughs> three normal guys. Yeah, but, and I don't know, but but it was definitely a, a premature fire. I think most people yeah, knew, knew that. Definitely, I think. Uh, He'll pr probably find a job pretty easily. Yeah. Um, not soon. He'll have to wait till so the yeah. other coaching shuffle. But, but they gave him all that money, though. So they, he's still gonna get paid. Oh, he's still he's gonna, gonna get paid, of course. All that money just to not be around get Dan Gilbert. I'll take that any day, <laughs> any day. Quick Celtics update. They're on a little three-game winning streak. They had a big win in Oklahoma City, and the game they were down by. They were down, I think, 20 Seems points. Seems like they've been down a lot in the early part yeah. of the season. Yeah, they were down. They were in Oklahoma City last. Thursday, I believe. They were down, and they came back. There were big shots everywhere. Marcus Morris was hitting big shots. Kyrie, he was making plays. For, they, Terry Rozier, they just had a solid... They, they battled back to, to win that game. Even Al Horford, there was a point where he made 
three or four threes in a row in that game against Oklahoma City. Then they went on to play. They played Detroit Saturday, and they played them. They played them again the other night and won both games. The the game in Detroit, they blew them out. They they ran them out the gym. But the game Tuesday in Boston against Detroit, Kyrie Irving finally found his shot. He was hot. He was he was making things happen. He was making plays happen for everybody. And you know this, they showed us the team that we're expecting that we're expecting to come the end of the season. They showed us what what they're about. So I think that was yeah. solid. In tonight, again, we film on Wednesdays. This will be the biggest test of the season so far. The undefeated Bucks. Bucks. So that'll be a good matchup, good yeah. measuring stick. And then they got the the Pacers, I think, after that. Yeah, yeah the it looks Pacers like the on Pacers, Saturday. who are uh, another That's solid a, team, yeah. off to solid start. So really, uh, a couple good measuring stick yeah. games early on in the season. Yeah. I don't put too much stake. Yeah. I don't think you do really until no. December. Yeah, after December. Um, but yeah, they're they're looking like the team that they should be. They're sitting at five and two right now. Yeah, so. yeah. The Raptors, Kawhi Leonard. People thought that man was going to fall off the, the face of the earth just because he didn't play that much last year. They thought he wasn't going to be the same player. This guy is the best perimeter defender in the league. He's still, and he's giving, he's giving teams at least 26, 28 points per game. His, um, his defense, though, the other night he made Ben Simmons look like a little boy. He, uh, he kept taking the ball away from him. Even be, after he crossed half court, he took the ball from him. So the Raptors, you know all the trash I talked about Canada last season. Kawhi Leonard... Is the person that they need to take them over whoa, the Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let's stop and talk about this a little more. Are you saying that the Raptors have a chance at winning the East? Yes. Whoa, this is breaking news. This is, this is like, huge. One player has changed all this, right? <laughs> yeah, Kawhi Leonard. Because wow. he, unlike DeMar DeRozan, he does not get scared when he... But you said they'll never win with Kyle Lowry. I'm sure uh, we can pull that up and oh, yeah, find it. That's, that's why I'm saying they have a chance. I'm, I'm not fully going in yet. Okay. They got to get rid of... Once they get rid of Kyle Lowry, I, and if I see who they get, I'll let you know. But right now, they're... They have a better chance than they did last year, so. This this is shocking, <laughs> folks. If you follow this show, you know how shocking this really is. Yeah, Pedro laughing back there. <laughs> Pedro's laughing or trying to communicate with us. But uh, why don't you take us to uh, our next segment? Athletes Corner. So I'm doing like I'm doing a little college hoops tour right now. It's very cool. So I've been going to different colleges around Massachusetts and talking to the, the basketball teams. First stop was UMass Boston, where I talked with the players and coaches about the upcoming season. I've been they even have a Lynn native there, Javaris Hill. He's a freshman out there. So check out Athletes Corner with the UMass Boston men's basketball team. Welcome to Athletes Corner. I'm here at UMass Boston. I got a Lynn native here, Javaris Hill, first year at UMass Boston. We're going to get caught up with him. Let's, t let's see what he's been up to. How's it going, man? It's going good so far. I'm here with sophomore Alex Sanchez. We're going to talk, talk about the upcoming season, man. What, what are some things you're looking forward to? Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, you know trying to win the chip. Michael Boyd, he was the second leading scorer on the team last season, so he's hoping to you know, be the leading scorer again or just put up better numbers than he did last year. What's going on, man? Another man, I'm all right, getting ready for the season. We're here with junior Charles, Mit Charles Mitchell, leading scorer from last season. He's about to have another big season. I'm here with the head men's basketball coach, Coach Harris. How you doing? Doing good, thanks for coming. Tell me the transition for you, how's the transition been? The transition, like, I've been developing more and more each day, so, so far it's going good too. I'm quicker than everybody, I like to think so, so in that case it wasn't that bad, but uh, everyone is bigger. Some people, uh, they are stronger than me, but you know, I figured it out, I uh, take advantage of my advantage. You came off as a freshman, second leading scorer, the team came off, you know, you came out with a splash. How, how were you able to transition like that? Um, just in practice, really, just getting after it, going hard every day, making sure we're executing, doing everything coach asked us to do. Yeah. Being a leader on any team is amazing because you're able to contribute to the team and coming in as a freshman I didn't know it was going to be my time but I had to do what I had to do to um, help the team win. What have you seen from some of your younger players? Kind of just what we expected, a lot of talent, a lot of athleticism, uh, not much experience at this level, uh, not much IQ yet, um, but that's just because they haven't done it. Uh, but they are learning, they're getting better every day. Um, so we're excited about their growth from week one to week two. 
What are some things that you worked on for your game to get you ready for the college level? Uh, the most important thing was for, for me was my shot and having a better motor overall. My outside shot, being able to facilitate better, play defense better, obviously, that's the main goal, and just being a better leader. What were some things that you were doing every year that to help you get better? So coming in, uh, Coach will always tell me I'm taking freshman shots, which I was. We always go over um, film, and you'll see me rushing my shots, rushing my shots. And as we, as I got used to the um, college way of um, playing and the fast tempo, I've like um, adjusted. My, my pull up, okay. pull up three. That's something I've been uh, improving. You know, Coach Harris always tells me I got to work on that. So I think that's a big up this year, yeah. and uh, my defense, of course. How, how important is it to have your two leading scorers back as well as some other key contributors back on your team? I mean, both those guys were our leading scorers last year. Um, they were freshmen, so it's more of an opportunity for them. So I look at being able to build on those guys. You guys finished third place in the conference last season. What's it going to take for you guys to finish first this, this upcoming season? Um, we're definitely going to have to work hard. I mean, we're going to take off from where we left off last year as far as energy goes. we got a lot more talent this year, so a lot more size. So we should be better off this year. I think in tight games, when we get to tight games, you know, we really got to lock in. we got a lot of young guys, so uh, just pushing through to the end mm -hmm. and uh, getting those tight games against those good teams is really what's going to separate us from the rest. The toughest opponents for you guys was Keene State. So well, what do you guys got to do to make sure you guys, when you guys play them, you guys come out with the victories? We have to play to our pace and also our game. Uh, Keene State does a very good job at rushing us and everyone jumps to the ball as soon as we drive. So we have to be smart with our decisions and we have to make the right play and also make the right shot. We got a lot to do. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get me to tell you we're gonna finish first. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't, we gotta play hard and be focused. How was that tenure meniscus? Just be, not being able to get on the court and just watching you guys not being able to be out there with you guys. Uh, it was kind of tough, you know, because uh, one thing that keeps me motivated in the books is playing ball. So it was tough just focusing on the books, but I did it and uh, it worked out. You as as a season, you know, as your times coaching here, what is what is something that you've done personally to help you become a better coach in, in your time here? I, honestly, I think it's become a father, um, being becoming a father twice, and these are somebody's sons. Um, you know, and just kind of coaching the way I want my son to be coached, and you know, that doesn't mean I don't get after him. I, I get after him a lot, but you know, I hold him accountable. But I, you know, I love him, and I tell him I love him, and you know, it's important that that they hear from me that I love them. Talk about the college experience so far. How are you liking it? How's it going? How's the classes and everything like that? Uh, everything's going good so far. Um, I like how everything is so far, stuff like that. Yeah. But like, it's a big transversal for me. Like coming from high school yeah. to um, college is very different. But other than that, classes are going good so far. They're coming for that number one spot. Mike Boyd said it, so we're gonna check, we're gonna look out for them. And he's gonna be averaging 20 points per game. That's what he, that's what I heard. That's just what I heard. He expects a lot of wins. He's gonna put up those numbers. He's gonna lead his teams. He's ready for basketball season. I'm ready for basketball season. We're all ready for basketball season. He won't say they're gonna finish in first, but I'll say it. They'll finish in first place this season. All right. This has been Coach ha Coach Harris. You've been watching Athletes Corner, and we're done. All right, we are back. That's very cool. You're checking out all these schools. Yeah. What, what other schools are you going to? So I'm, I had BU on Monday. I was at Boston University. Tonight, as in today, as in Thursday, I'm going to Northeastern University. Next week, I'll be at Wentworth Institute of Technology. Nice. Very cool. So we'll get to see all those players. Very cool in-depth pieces. Uh, we ramble a lot, so we don't have much time. Let's just go into the, the newly released playoff. Um, NCAA rankings. Right now, the top four teams are Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, LSU, and Michigan. That's about I mean, right. I mean, sorry, LSU, so yeah. not Michigan. That's, what do you that's think? A, that's about right. That's about right. I think that they, they got it right. The, the, you can make a case for Michigan. Yeah, you can. You can make a case for, case for Michigan, but I think Michigan is in a great position where they are outside looking in because it's always better to be on the outside looking in when they first release it because you, you – 
those te those four teams that are in, if they lose, then they're out, and you know you'll work yeah. your way in. So that's I like the teams from five to eight. Those are those are the teams that you know they should be happy where they are because they have a chance to get in. I'm so frustrated that UCF is is sitting at number nine. They're undefeated. They've been undefeated the past two seasons. I want. I know that they haven't. They don't play a tough schedule, but I think that they're so fun to watch. And last year they challenged Alabama. They challenged Alabama. Oh come on now. They haven't lost in two seasons. I don't um, you are curious to see how no. these smaller schools do against these bigger schools, no. even if they get blown out. No. Perfect. Personally, I would love to see a UCF in the uh, in the playoffs. I think it would be awesome. They're undefeated. Anyway, Not me. you're right. They pretty much got everything right. I, th I think you could make a case for Michigan, but um, they got it yes, right. They, they got, got it right. right. All right, let's get into our predictions. We won't do the prediction videos from last week just because of the time. Maybe I can put it in in post, but let's see. Hopefully, I get a perfect score. That's I've been trying to get a perfect score, and I have not been able That's to That's pretty difficult to do. Yeah, so... We do you have, have the schedule, or am I doing this? Yeah, do you started off. All right, give me a second, folks. Well, I could, uh, I okay, could I got that. it right here. Let's do it. Uh, Raiders at 49ers. Uh, let me, uh, Raiders. Well. Uh, 49ers. Uh, Falcons at Redskins. Team from Washington. Yeah, Redskins. Lions versus Vikings. 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 Oh, got two minutes. Steelers versus Ravens. Ravens. Chiefs versus, uh, I'm going to go Steelers. Chiefs versus Browns. Browns. Chiefs. No, no, Chiefs. What? Chiefs, 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 Chiefs. Jets versus Dolphins. Jets. Dolphins. Bears versus Bills. Bears. Bears. Uh, Bucks versus Panthers. 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 Chargers versus Seahawks. Seahawks. Chargers. Texans versus Broncos. Texans. Broncos. Rams versus Saints. Rams. Saints. Packers versus uh, Pats. Patriots. Patriots. Titans versus Cowboys. Titans. Cowboys. And before we leave, Pedro, if you could cue that video up that I oh, got a video. before. There's a video. There's what do we video. got? Hello and welcome to the sports show. It's currently unnamed. We actually have a challenge for you guys at home to try to come up with a name for the show. Hello and welcome to the post-Super Bowl edition of after the whistle. I got like one foot on the bandwagon. I'm kind of holding on. I'm not fully on there yet. I'm not a passenger on the bandwagon. I will be soon. I, was yeah. I thought it would go further than five games, but it just seemed like this was Ovechkin's year, and it seems like the Capitals are so deep. Buck Nell. Buck Nell. The 14 seed. I don't see him going too far, but I think that they're going to upstate, upset Michigan State. So 13... Uh, UNC football players were suspended for selling their special edition, uh, was it Nike or Jordan? I'm in all black because they definitely felt like a funeral last night. So it's, it's, it's coming to the, the point where there's only so many MVP caliber, caliber players, maybe 10 max, and if there's, you know, 30 some odd teams in the NBA. It's we're going to talk about Carson <laughs> Smith, oh who actually injured his hand throwing his baseball, injured his shoulder, shoulder popped out of place, um, throwing his glove down. In you guys have been talking, I've been watching these clips, I don't know who put together this highlight reel, but the, the, seeing all these clips together is just ridiculous on how bad Cleveland's defense That's has been. That. But I do agree with you that they need to get this Aaron Donald thing settled. It is his second holdout. Nick yep. Foles, like you said, he yep. could have been baking cakes, brownies, yep. cookies. Yeah. I, I have a little bit of an issue with calling it LeBron school. Well, because the, he's only paying, and I shouldn't I, say only, but he's this is a public school. It's public he school. didn't invent, I promise. It's been around for 10 years. Before we get out of here. So this is, unfortunately, uh, my last show on After the Whistle. I've accepted a new job in Tewksbury. I know I wasn't here for long, but I think we did some great stuff here with the great staff and great board of directors. It's much closer to my home. I, I live in Lowell, so Tewksbury will be much, much closer. It's very sad. Tears. Me and Mukala uh, had a great rapport. Pedro did a great, uh, well, I wouldn't say great. He did an okay <laughs> job directing. No, I'm kidding. He did a great job. But I miss uh, all of you fan. I won't say fans plural because I don't think that we had that many of you. But for those of you who did watch, thank you very much. This has been a great experience. And ESPN, if you ever want to pick up me and Mukala, feel free. I think we'll both leave whatever gigs we have as long as it's like uh, seven figures. That's what we're looking for, seven-figure deal after the whistle. <laughs>
Fox Sports 1, ESPN, doesn't matter. Anyway, Mukala, you can let us out. The music's playing. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.